Hi, this is David Mike Welcome to video Foundations 1B. So that's the second of three devoted to topic one, which is foundations. And so that's a part one topic for candidates. It publishes on March 9, Friday, but can be downloaded at any time, including our new iPad friendly format. And so we continue in sequence. We've got a, several or four chapters assigned from Elton, really all about a uh, capital asset pricing model and some related concepts, concepts including non-standard CAPM, and also a, a little brief introduction to APT. Uh, so it's 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 a quite assigned. I have said that I think it's CAPM is overly assigned here with all four chapters. Hard to say how much of that will be tested. I think there's definitely, or let me restate, in my opinion, there's a lot of theory here that won't show up on the exam. Uh, then AMEC chapter four repeats from prior years. It's technically a fra uh, segment of that overall chapter, largely about risk adjusted performance measures like the information ratio and the trainor. So as usual, learning spreadsheets associated with this, and since we're in video 1B, that means the spreadsheets are 1B, 1 through 5, and I try to color code them for those who are interested in a closer look at some of the underlying. I like to say that, for me at least, uh, spreadsheets are the uh, most concrete way to understand the quantitative aspect. So let's start with Elton Chapter 5, Delineating the Efficient Portfolio. We'll start with we're asked to calculate the expected return. So this is absolutely a key ingredient in part one, right? We absolutely need to do this, know how to do this. And further, there will be several question, question types, which would just use this as a component is so fundamental. And it's the, it's, we've just got a weighted average here. By the way, I don't change up my notation deliberately. Rather, I'm, I'm synchronized with the notation in the reading. That's really so as to not cause confusion vis-a-vis -vis the readings is the only reason I use this notation that otherwise I would not use because Elton's got X of A and X of B as representing the fraction of the portfolio in asset A. I think that X of A is a little confusing to me. But notice we've just got a weighted average here. A two asset expected portfolio return is a linear combination. So for example, we might be given as a setup that in the, again, it's just a two asset portfolio, a very typical simplistic example where 40% of the portfolio is invested in asset A. And so the other 60% by definition, one minus 40% must be invested in asset B. And then the expected asset return of A is 10% and asset B has a higher expected return. So we won't be surprised later if asset B has a higher volatility, higher risk, higher return. So that's our setup then. If our two asset portfolio were allocated this way, what would be the expected return? Well, it's just a linear combination of weighted average. 40% in asset A plus 60% in asset B. 40% times 10% is 4% plus 60% times 16% is 9.6. 9.6 plus 4 is 13.6%. So given the expected returns of each of these assets and the relative weightings, we absolutely should be able to do this fairly quickly. So practice if we need, if you need to. Now then the expected volatility is next and then another key ingredient. I can almost guarantee this will show up at least once or more on the exam. So fundamental is it? It's our it's our portfolio volatility in the, again, the simple two asset case. Sigma sub P denotes uh, volatility. So if we squared this, we would get portfolio variance. But here we're taking all of these three terms, the sum of these three terms, quantity square root gives us portfolio volatility. And then also we absolutely need to know here that this covariance between A and B is equal to the product of the correlation between A and B. That correlation is going to be that unitless measure between negative one and one, where no correlation is zero. So independence would apply, would imply zero correlation. And then we've got volatility of A, volatility of B. So the product of correlation and volatility and volatility is in turn covariance, which is part of the its own term here. The 